Hey there, welcome to Beale Science. We've got a legend. <laughs> We've got a legend in the building. Mr. G is here to teach us some more physics, some more amazing things about lasers and about light and about everything else. Great. Um, we've already looked at making your own laser light show and how you can make different shapes with sound and light. And the next thing we're going to cover is what? We're going to cover uh, light waves themselves. What is light? What is light? And so one of the things we're hoping to be able to do is to be able to measure the wavelength of light using lasers. Yes. Light is really cool. Light acts like, acts like a wave. It acts like this kind of a wave. And it's got different wavelengths. I'm just... So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a scientific tool. This one's called a diffraction grating. It's like a picket fence in the sense we've got little lines, but in between lines is a little gap because the lines are not exactly touching. When we shine the, the light through the grating, it's going to separate wavelengths. We see that separation as being different colors. The closest color to the center, to the white light, is violet, and then blue, and then green, and yellow, and finally red. As the longer wavelengths are separated the most, they're further out. So here's a green light, and if I shine it through there, notice that there's only a green dot off to the side. It has something to do with the way the grating is built and the wavelength. If I use a red light, here's a red light, and shine it through the grating, you might notice that the red is further out. If I shine them both at the same time, the same place, you'll see that the red is further out because the wavelength is longer. We're gonna show you that we can take something as simple as this and measure in this room something to determine the actual wavelength of these lights. We are in physics class and we are in deep right now. And what Mr. G is about to teach you is the, uh, it's the finest explanation that I've ever heard for why we end up with those points of light that you saw over there on the board. You gotta stick with us here. It gets technical because there's no other way around it. This is what, this is what teachers love. <laughs> we get to do some mathematics, this is physics. So, what you're about to see, if you know anything about math and physics, is gonna melt your face. The actual measurements on the grating are 1,000 lines per millimeter, which is the same thing as saying there's a million lines in every meter. Now, of course, a meter is pretty big. These, these dots represent the lines and the openings. So they're supposed to be like a million in every meter. So we've, we've enlarged this slightly. It also means that the distance between the openings 10 to the minus six meters. If you recall, when I shined the green light through this, straight through, there was a dot. This little green line on the whiteboard represents the laser. There was also a green dot out here. And it was determined, the location, by the number of lines, or in another way of saying, by the distance between them. So just take a look at this. Here's a distance from the grating to the wall or the screen. And here's the distance from the center out to the place where the green dot shows up. That makes an angle. So now we're gonna enlarge it. And over here, this represents two dots, two openings. They're so close together that you can consider the laser is going through like probably a hundred or more of these little openings all at once and still going, this is going out to the place on the screen where it shows up. But if you look in here, this is the key as to why there's a green dot at the center and there's a green dot here, but there's nothing in between. And it has to do with the fact that waves, this type, if you end up with two waves, I can't do it together, but if they come together like so, they add up, which means they don't disappear. But if one is doing this while the other one is doing that, they will cancel out. Most of the waves cancel out until you get to one special direction, but one has to travel further. And if it travels further by just exactly the wavelength of that light, that means that these two waves, and probably many more in that same direction, all the waves are together. And so they add up and we see green light. But in between, there's enough differences, enough different waves that they cancel out. So here's the, the key. The extra distance, we call it lambda, which is a, a symbol for wavelength. This little line here 
is perpendicular between these two light, light waves, light lines. So here we have a little triangle with the same angle because this, the two sides of, these, of this angle are perpendicular to the two sides of that. And in geometry somewhere there's a theorem or a corollary that says if two angles have their sides mutually perpendicular, they are congruent. This side, which is lambda, if we divide that by d, mathematically, that's, that's called the sine of the angle. Coming over to this bigger triangle, where we have things out in the open, where we can measure things, we have x and we have l. L is the distance from the little grating to the screen. And x over l, that ratio, is called the tangent of the angle. So what really we have is by measuring these two things, we can find the angle and then come over here and we notice, oh, we're trying to find the wavelength of light. So let's do a little math here, a little algebra here says that the wavelength will be equal to d times the sine of the angle. And we also already know that d is 10 to the minus 6 meters. I mean, there's really a number for this. And so all we have to do is measure these things to find the angle and come over here and take the sine of that angle, whatever it is, and we should get the wavelength, which makes us exciting because this is really fun. So right now I'm gonna set it up so that my little grating is one meter from the, from the board and measure out to that dot, 64 centimeters. Okay, let's see. This is just by hand, this is really cool. And we measured that this distance X was 64 centimeters. And this distance L we chose very nicely to be 100 centimeters. So the tangent of the angle we're looking for is equal to 64 over 100, which equals 0.64. And so now we need to find the angle, which means we take the inverse tangent and we get 32.6 degrees. Okay, now we have the angle. Now we have to go back and think, okay, remember these two light waves, one travels one wavelength further, so it's gonna be the sine of 32.6 degrees. So this should give us the answer for the wavelength of that green laser light, 0.5387. A multiplication of 10 to the minus six times 0.5387. And so we're gonna get 5.38 times 10 to the minus seventh meters. Scientists like meters. <laughs> but we could also write it in another unit that some people are familiar with called nanometers. When you deal with wavelengths of light that humans see, visible light, this is going to be 538 nanometers. 538. Right. So what we need to do really is if we can find the actual wavelength that they use in the green lasers. Hooey. <laughs> We checked Google, and we just checked the laser, and this laser says on it, the wavelength of that green light is 532 nanometers. Oh darn, we're off by six nanometers. <laughs> you've, got, you've got to realize that the size of this, it's not like we were a little off here, we're off by, you know, hundred thousandths of an inch. So you, you can do this at home. You can do this at home with your green laser, your red laser. Follow the instructions of Mr. G. Get your mom to hold the meter stick. <laughs> yeah. It'll be just awesome. Uh, and maybe, maybe you can leave us a comment what you calculated. So, Mr. G, thank you, you for enlightening us with lasers and light and physics and math one more time. And we've got a whole lot more if you didn't see the first one with Mr. G, where we turn this room into a, a disco, into some sort of big <laughs> rock concert. We had fog, we had lasers, we have music, um, and you can make it at home. But we're not done. No, Mr. Got G's more. got probably my favorite thing that he does at his magic shows is uses a little solar cell and sends music across space. On a light beam. On a light beam. See, you know, the whole point of us hanging out here playing for an entire day in the lab is to remind you to keep on learning.